Okay, chapter 11, part two, transportation planning and strategy. Understanding the modal options is an important aspect of transportation management. However, before the freight moves, other vital issues must also be addressed. Supply chain professionals must make a series of interrelated transportation decisions and design processes that properly align with the organization's supply chain strategies. The initial decision for any organization is straightforward but important. Determining which department or departments will be responsible for each part of the transportation process. In most organizations, responsibility for transportation decision falls to one or more of the following departments, logistics, procurement, and marketing. Firms now assign transportation decision-making responsibility to a single department, which strives to coordinate inbound and outbound transportation, develop common goals, leverage purchasing power, and procure quality service in support of supply chain excellence. Terms of sale clarify the delivery and payment terms agreed upon by a seller and buyer. Why selection of these terms is critical as the decision determines where the buyer's responsibilities begin and where the seller's responsibilities end. They cover issues related to mode and carrier selection, transportation rate negotiation, in-transit freight responsibility, and other key decisions. Free on board or FOB terms are used for domestic transactions, while international commercial terms or INCO terms are used for international transactions. INCO terms facilitate efficient freight flows between the countries. As described by the International Chamber of Commerce, INCO terms are international rules that are accepted by governments, legal authorities, and practitioners worldwide for the interpretation of the most commonly used terms in international trade. They address matters relating to the rights and obligations of the parties to the contract of sale with respect to the delivery of the goods sold. In other words, they don't spell out who owns the product. This is what the contract does. However, they do spell out when risk passes from the seller to the buyer. The organization with FOB freight control and procurement responsibility must analyze the transportation make or buy decision. Firms must choose between transporting goods using a private fleet, in other words, the make option, which account for nearly half of all U.S. freight transportation spending. Firms may also use external service providers to move freight, which is the buy option. Some firms have decided that it's best to have external experts move the freight and or manage the transportation process, as they also offer a variable cost, simplified headache-free alternative to private transportation. By using four higher carriers, the customers do not have to incur the large capital cost, invest the time needed to build transportation expertise, or take on the potential risks inherent in operating a private fleet. <clears throat> Third-party logistics, offers a wide array of transportation services, as you see on the slide. To clarify number two, traffic management, the 3PL provides transportation planning and tactical decision making, handles administrative functions like freight bill auditing, and coordinates supply chain activities. Some 3PLs provide international transportation assistance in the areas of documentation, carrier and route selection, customs clearance, and other tasks that impact the timely, cost-effective flow of goods across borders. Three types of international 3PLs that provide valuable services for organizations that do not have internal global transportation expertise or the freight volume to warrant a full-time staff include International Freight Forwarders, or IFFs, Non-Vessel Owning com Common Carriers, NVOCCs, and, of course, Customs Brokers. So I think this is a really useful graphic that kind of summarizes the differences between the various modes. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to kind of peruse those as I think it's a very, very useful breakdown. <clears throat> Numerous studies have been conducted over the years to identify the most important performance capabilities in modal selection. These studies commonly identify accessibility, transit time, reliability, and product safety as the key determinants in choosing a mode. Cost is another essential consideration in modal selection. 
So let's look at each of these in a little bit more detail. Accessibility determines whether a particular mode can physically perform the transport service required and considers the mode's ability to reach origin and destination facilities and provide service over the specified route in question. Accessibility advantages uh, are attained by motor carrier because of its inherent ability to provide service to virtually any location. As you see on the slide, the ones that have a disadvantage, however, are air, rail, and water. <clears throat> All face accessibility limitations due to infrastructure issues. Transit time is critical in supply chain management because of its impact on inventory availability, stockout costs, and customer satisfaction. Transit time is the total elapsed time that it takes to move goods from the point of origin to the destination, i.e. door-to-door. -door. So as you see on the slide, <clears throat> the transit advantage, transit time advantage, um, attaches to air transportation because it's very fast. Motor carriage is also relatively fast because it can provide more direct movement from origin to destination. And then the disadvantage attaches to rail, water, and pipeline in that they're extremely slow. Reliability re refers to the consistency of the transit time provided by a transportation mode. And many companies feel that transit time reliability is more important than speed. And you can see those that have the advantages and disadvantages in terms of reliability. Product safety is critical as goods must arrive at the destination in the same condition they were in when they were tendered for shipment. Precautions must be taken to protect freight from loss due to external theft, internal pilferage, and misplacement, as well as damage due to poor freight handling techniques, poor ride quality, and accidents with packaging being important. And once again, here you can see those modes that have an advantage in this area and those that have a disadvantage. The cost of transportation is an important consideration in the modal selection decision, especially when a low-value commodity needs to be moved. A number of factors are taken into consideration when freight rates are developed, including weight of the shipment, distance from origin to destination, nature and value of the product, and required speed. And of course here you can see those that have the advantages and those that have the disadvantages. Carrier selection is a specialized purchasing decision that typically will be made after the modal decision has been made with attention to selecting the individual transportation service providers within the mode. The carrier selection is based on a variety of shipment criteria and carrier capabilities, such as transit time average and reliability, equipment availability and capacity, geographic coverage, product protection, and of course, freight rates. Direct service providers provide point-to-point -point flow of goods, generating the advantages of speed and safety because freight is handled less and moves without detour to the destination. Indirect service requires interim stops or transfer between equipment. This reduces transit speed and subjects the freight to additional handling, but offers, of course, lower costs because carriers can consolidate the freight for more efficient transportation. Some transportation buyers take an adversarial approach and try to minimize transportation costs, holding out for the largest possible discount. Um, however, based on my experience, I would say this is, has gotten uh, has fallen out of favor. And a large part of that is due to the move to TQM or total quality management in the early 90s that really espouse the philosophy of integrating with your suppliers, even your transportation suppliers. All right, let's look at transportation execution and control. When a shipment needs to be moved across the supply chain, transportation planning efforts culminate and execution processes take center stage. Decisions must be made regarding shipment size, route, and delivery method, freight documents must be repaired, in-transit problems must be resolved, and service quality must be monitored. To ensure maximum effectiveness in shipment carrier matching processes, many organizations maintain a corporate transportation routing guide. The strategy behind routing guides is to promote supply chain excellence through transportation. Transportation managers have the ability to make last-minute cost-saving decisions 
such as efforts to consolidate freight, coordinate shipment deliveries, and take full advantage of container capacity, or by combining multiple orders destined for a single location into a single shipment for distribution. Let's look at freight documentation. Shipments are accompanied by related documents that spell out the details of the shipment. Um, there's an entire class on this, so I won't drill down into too much detail. Um, your, your chapter covers it. And Export Import or IBUS 20 goes into a great amount of detail on kind of the nuts and bolts of freight documentation. All right, maintaining in transit visibility. Um, management of transportation process does not end when the freight and related documents are tendered to the carrier, quite the opposite. It's important to control the freight and manage key events as product moves across the supply chain. Visibility of in transit freight is a key facilitator of this control as it prevents freight from temporarily falling off the radar screen. And then of course, there are transportation metrics. Key service requirements are generally observable and quantifiable. This allows organizations to monitor activities through transportation metrics or key performance indicators, which are objective measures of carrier or private fleet performance critical to the success of the organization. And here you see some of those metrics. And then last but not least is coming full circle, of course, monitoring the surface uh, quality. One strategy for developing an objective, holistic view of carrier service quality is to develop scorecards, as you see here.